Today we're going to set up an iPhone or an iPad to work the best for the visually impaired. Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. So, this video was requested by a viewer and a big thanks to them for requesting this, the idea for this video. I had previously made a video showing how to set up an Android phone or tablet to work the best with low vision or just the visually impaired in general. And I had always thought about making one for an iOS device. Now anytime I'm working with a client at work and I'm setting up their iPhone or iPad, there's a couple things that I do always to make it work the best that it can right out of the gate for the visually impaired. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to do that. So when you first get your device, you're probably not gonna be able to see it, okay? You're not gonna be able to see the settings to go in and change them. So you can either have somebody help you change all the settings, or what I always do is just go ahead and turn on voiceover. And the easiest way to do that is to have Siri do it. Turn on voiceover. Okay. I turned on voiceover. Voiceover's on. Now we're going to be able to change all of our settings. Now all of these settings are going to be great for low vision and then some of the settings that we're going to do will work great for low vision and no vision at all. So if you're totally blind and you're setting up your device, some of these you can just ignore. They're not really going to apply to you. So the first thing I always do is change the background. When you first get this device, it has some kind of bright colored background. I don't even exactly remember what it is, but it's not going to work the best for low vision. You guys know low vision contrast. Contrast is super important. If I have a bright, bright background on this home screen here, I'm not going to be able to see my icons as well. So the first thing is changing the wallpaper. Now this isn't going to be a tutorial on voiceover. Uh, Derek, Daniel, and I have a whole series called VoiceOver 101. You guys can check in uh, both of our channels to get information about that, learn how to use VoiceOver. So I'm not going to go over that. We're just going to be talking about setting up the device. Choose a new wallpaper. Lock screen wallpaper. Choose a new wallpaper. Button. Select settings. Edit. Now you have two wallpaper options. Dynamic wallpapers. Button. Still photo wallpapers. Button. Dynamic wallpapers or still photo wallpapers. I would recommend the still photo. Uh, dynamic, it has movements, it has parallaxing effect, and that's kind of wasted on us, um, in my opinion. It's, I think the just the standard photo is, still photo is gonna be your best bet. Now we're looking for a dark photo. Settings. For most of you though, the darkest photo is going to be the very last one in the list. A swatch on the page two of two. And it's going to be the solid black background. You may also have a dark background with white dots. That will work too. If you don't have the solid black, that'll work also. You can also go into an app, download an app that where you can download wallpapers and you can search for different kinds of wallpapers, uh, different dark colored wallpapers. You can have a little bit of style, uh, a little bit of a decorative wallpaper, just as long as it carries that dark theme. So you can set this to your home screen and your lock screen as well. Now we're gonna go into display and brightness. Brightness, head in. I like a bright screen. Sometimes I'll be working with consumers and they'll give me their device and it's so dark it makes it really hard to see. Brighter is going to be better. Now, of course, you're gonna sacrifice battery life if you go brighter, brighter the screen, the more battery you're gonna use. But, you know, in my, in my opinion, that's, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make as long as I can have a nice bright screen and see what I'm trying to see. So I always boost the brightness. Now, if you're using one of these larger iPads, you may have an option in display and brightness for display zoom. That's where you can make everything larger on the screen. It takes advantage of this bigger screen. So if you are using that, I recommend changing the view from normal to zoomed. Now we're going into the general section so we can get into the accessibility. Software, handoff, multitasking, and accessibility. 
button. Select it. Vision. Heading. We're going to turn zoom on. Now when you turn it on for the first time, it's going to pop up in a little window. If you want to do full screen zoom like I do, I prefer full screen. I think it works better for me personally. Some people like the little window. But if you want to switch to the full screen, that's going to be the zoom region. So we're going to keep going down the list here. Zoom magnifies the int. Double tap three fingers to zoom. Track three fingers to move around. Double tap three fingers. Follow focus. Smart typing. Smart typing will switch to show controller. The zoom controller allows zoom region. Full screen zoom. There's the zoom region. Select. Selected. Full screen zoom. Window zoom. So this is where you can switch between the two different styles of the magnification. Zoom region. Now for some people, they're going to want the screen inverted. They're going to want the black background with the light colored text. So if you are one of those people and that's what you prefer, you're going to go into display accommodations. Select invert colors. Off. There's a lot of settings in here for colors. So I recommend investigating this section here, but we're going to go into the invert colors. Turn all cup cup enabling in invert colors. Off. Button. Smart invert. Off. So you have two versions in here. There's a smart invert and the classic invert. Smart invert is going to invert the background, but it will try. It does a pretty good job. It tries to not invert like photos and your icons on your home screen. If you want the inverted screen, I would recommend the smart invert. But larger text. Um, button. So this section is where you can bump up the size of your, your text on your on-screen text and the font. You can go pretty big and then you even have an option to bump it up even more for accessibility reasons. You can turn bold text on or off. Button shapes. Um. Button shapes, I turn that on. That puts a shape around some of the buttons in the different areas of the operating system. Makes them easier to see. So in this section, increased contrast, you can play around with some of the settings to make things easier to see. I turn off transparencies. When you pull down the notification, when you pull down the notification panel here on the home screen, usually it's semi-transparent, so you can somewhat see the icons underneath it. Well, that can kind of mess it up and make it difficult to read your notifications. So that's why we turn off transparency. Transparency, darken colors. We darken colors, makes them easier to see. Darken colors. Um. You can reduce motion, that might make things easier to see for you. On slash off labels. Off. Now, another thing that I like to do is set up the shortcut for the home button, and that is the accessibility shortcut setting. That is at the very bottom of the list here in accessibility. So, a quick way to get all the way to the bottom is to use a three finger swipe. Accessibility shortcut. Voiceover. There it is. Button. Select it. Triple click the home button for heading. So this sets up the shortcut on the home button. And as he just said, when you triple click the home button, you can launch certain accessibility options. Assistive touch. Reorder assistive touch. Classic invert colors. Reorder color filters. Re reduce white point. Re Smart invert colors. Re Switch control. Re Selected. Voiceover. Re zoom. Reorder zoom. Reorder selected. Voiceover. So I like to do voiceover. And this is a personal preference. You can choose whichever one of these that you want. I prefer voiceover, and I'll tell you why. I am not a 100% voiceover user. I don't use it all the time. But I want an easy way to turn it on real quickly if I do need it. And yes, I can just have Siri do it, but I don't want to have to long press the home button and speak out loud to Siri if I just want to turn it on. It's so much more convenient for me to just really quickly click, click, click of the home button to turn voiceover on. Another great reason for to have this shortcut set this way is if I need help with my device and I'm, I use voiceover and I need to hand it to a sighted person to look at something for me, chances are they're not going to have any idea how voiceover works. So I can really quickly click, click, click to turn off voiceover and give it to them so that they can use it the normal way. So that's why I prefer voiceover, but once again, personal preference, you can put whatever accessibility shortcut you want. You can also set multiple to this click. I try to keep it to one shortcut, makes it easy for me. 
Now the final thing that I like to do is go in and change the voice for VoiceOver and Siri. When you get your device for the first time, it's going to be the older robotic voice. So go in there and choose the enhanced voice. It's much more natural sounding, it has inflection in the voice, it doesn't sound so robotic. Okay guys, so that's just a couple little settings and things that I tweak, things that I do to every single eye device that <laughs> I set up. Really easy things to do and it's going to get it in a state that's going to be the easiest for you to use. Now, once you've done that, of course, I recommend practicing with the voiceover, practicing with the zoom magnifier. It's going to take practice. And yes, it will be frustrating at first. <laughs> You're going to want to throw this thing out a window. But with practice, just like everything, with practice it will get easier and you will be zooming through every single area of your iPad or your iPhone, no problem. You'll be able to use this guy 100%. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. As always, Sam with The Blind Life. If you have any questions about this topic or anything in general, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to help out. If you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. It helps out the channel tremendously. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can receive notifications each time I upload a video. And also, as always, huge thank you to everybody that's picked up a Blind Life t-shirt or one of the other 20-something designs I've got on Amazon for the visually impaired. If you want to learn more, there is a link to the Amazon shop in the description down below. But that's it for me, guys. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.